All right. Hey, everybody. This is Rosh, and you're watching FM9 Basics. So this is a video tutorial series I'm putting together to help new and experienced users program their uh, all their Fractal products, including the FM3, the FM9, and the AxeFX3. You can check out some of the tutorials on axefxbasics.com, fm3basics.com, fm9basics.com, and the rest of this YouTube channel. So uh, a little about myself. Once again, my name is Rosh. Uh, I'm a working musician here in LA and a uh, guitar tech. So I build and program a lot of guitar rigs for a lot of different clients. Some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, A Perfect Circle, and more. So I wanted to give back to the Fractal community and go through some uh, different live setups, different you know uh, ways to program your uh, FM9 units, as well as you know some tips and tricks that uh, I've learned over the years of using Fractal products, both live and in the studio and on tour. So uh, if you've been watching this video series, um, this is going to be a slightly different format than some of my previous videos. Um, this is mainly going to be dealing with a lot of different live setups. So a lot of my clients ask me like, you know, hey, Rosh, um, you know, I'm in a wedding band, I'm in a cover band, you know, um, uh, I want to use a, this type of setup or that type of setup. You know, what is the best way to do this live? Um, I'm very fortunate that I have a very busy month ahead and I'm going to be playing a lot of different gigs this month. Um, in a lot of different situations. Um, so one of the best things about all the Fractal products is that they have uh, a lot of flexibility in how you're gonna use them live in different live setups. So this particular video is going to be dealing mainly with running direct. So um, running direct and you know, usually is um, the type of setup where you're gonna run your FM9 right into the uh, mixer and then you're going to either have a front of house engineer, monitor engineer, or yourself send the guitar signal back to you through a, a wedge or, you know, some type of, you know, monitoring device. So um, in this case, I'm going to be playing a uh, corporate gig. So this is just like a corporate party, corporate function. Um, sometimes they call them, you know, GB gigs, general business gigs, or, you know, it's a type of corporate gig, you know, corporate party. And um, what we're going to be doing is that I'm going to be running the FM9 into the mixer, and then I'm going to send my own mix back to myself. So uh, the mixer I use is uh, generally on gigs is the Behringer X32. Um, and one of the reasons why I love this mixer is that you can... Um, use it and rem uh, remote control it digitally with an iPad or a phone. So I'm going to be running the FM9 into the mixer and then through a separate speaker wedge, I'm going to be um, dialing in my own mix of what I want. So everybody in the band is pretty savvy with the mixer. They're going to take out their phone or their iPad and then they're going to dial in their own mix either through their wedges or their in-ears. In my case, I'm going to be just be using a wedge. Um, and I'm not going to be using my usual RCF NX12 SMA. Um, it's kind of like a little too much for this type of gig. I'm just going to be using um, basically the PA is QSE K12s for the uh, PA speakers. And then my wedge, my personal wedge that's going to be facing me is going to be a QSE K8. Um, generally for these type of gigs, it's going to be some, you know, you don't need to be like full on stage volume. It's generally going to be, you know, a little bit more of a respectable volume. It's not going to be like a rock and roll kind of show. So when I do a setup like this, I'm running the FM9 right into the mixer and then I take my iPad out and then I can dial in my own mix. Everybody in the band sings. So I'm going to be, you know, you know, adjust how much my vocals I need in the wedge, how much I need a uh, bass, you know, drums, if there's keyboard player, banjo, violin, whatever, um, this is where you would be dialing in your own mix. Or if you have a front of house engineer or monitor engineer, you're going to tell them, hey, can I get more of guitar in my wedge? Can I get second guitar, acoustic guitar, whatever. And then the mix that's going to be dialed into the um, wedge is like your mix. Okay. Now, uh, in this particular gig, I'm going to be controlling the PA from the stage as well as the mix, uh, my own mix. So... Um, I'm just going to have my iPad and then just, you know, kind of uh, move sliders and faders up and down as I need it throughout the gig. Um, and, you know, if you have just like a standard analog mixer, same thing, you're going to, you know, be adjusting how much you need in your wedge or your in-ears from like, you know, any of the aux sends. So if I could offer a quick tip for something like this, if you are going to be running direct 
and you're going to be relying on another uh, front of house engineer, monitor engineer, you know, sound man, sound, um, you know, engineer at the venue, get a laminated card that's going to have your general mix preferences. Um, so I generally, when I have my own stage mix, you know, coming out of a wedge facing me, um, I generally keep it very simple. I always just ask for a ton of my vocals and then a little bit of the lead vocals underneath that, some of the guitar right around that same volume, and then that's basically it. Sometimes I'll ask for keyboard if there's a keyboard player or some other auxiliary instrument on the gig, like, you know, um, ukulele, banjo, acoustic guitar, whatever. Um, and then the easiest way to at least get a good starting mix is that if you have on this laminated card on a scale of one to 10, um, what your general preferences are. Um, it'll make it really easy for a front of house engineer or monitor engineer to mix your wedge so you're not constantly having to turn to them in the middle of the gig or doing the awkward, hey, can I get a little bit more vocals in my wedge? Because as a front of house engineer myself, it takes a little bit of time to you know go through different menus or turn different knobs or figure out who's asking for more guitar as you're looking um, at the band. So. If you can give a monitor engineer or front of house engineer a good starting head start, that'll be great. So for example, my laminate card that I usually, you know, will give to a monitor engineer of like my preferred starting mix is on a scale one to 10, my vocals at eight, lead vocals at six, guitar at six. And then if there's keyboard or other auxiliary instruments, I usually put it like three out of 10. Um, I generally don't ask for bass. I generally don't ask for drums. And then I try to keep it as simple as possible. Because if you say something to a front of house engineer like, oh, can I, I'll just get a little bit of everything. That's a very subjective thing, um, especially depending on what type of instrumentation your band is or what type of instrumentation you're doing. Um, they're gonna have to guess and they're gonna have to adjust anyway after sound check. So um, with something like this, I definitely recommend doing that. But if you are also pretty savvy with any type of mixers and you're dialing in your own mix using an X32 or the QSC um, Touch Mix series or anything like that, which are also great mixers, um, then just dial in your own mix in your own wedge or ears as such. So I'm gonna transition from this video to you know basically a live rig rundown of this particular setup when you're running direct and then you're getting all your guitar sound back through you through a wedge that's also gonna have other instruments mixed in. All right, check one, two, three, four. All right, everybody. So uh, let's do a little FM9 rig rundown. Uh, this time we're gonna be running direct. So here's my FM9. You can ignore that pedal and that's just to change uh, charts and lyrics. We got two expression pedals, the FM9. So now what we're gonna do is we're running direct. Obviously, if you look at this room, it's pretty small. Um, they're gonna extend this out a little bit, but it's pretty small kind of room so we don't need to go crazy and have you know an amp on stage or anything so I'm actually running direct uh, this is a wedge just for stage volume uh, and I'm running the FM9 directly into this Behringer X32 rack uh, it's kind of a mess over here we're gonna clean that up in a little bit but in the meantime all it is is just basically running the FM9 we're going to send it into the mixer and then uh, we can just digitally control that with an iPad and then that guitar is just going to run out of the wedge. And then this is obviously going to have a mix of vocals and anything else, uh, you know, different people need on stage. Uh, and then that's basically it. So if you look behind me, there is no guitar amp, no full range flat response wedge, nothing like that. Everything is just running direct. Um, so the audience is also going to get a mix of guitar coming out of the speakers right there with the vocals and everything else. But again, pretty simple setup. It's just uh, guitar, bass, and drums today uh, for a small corporate event. So um, that's pretty much all you'll need to do. Just make sure you run direct. Um, if you have a front of house engineer or anything like that, obviously they're going to be running the mix for you. But in this case, uh, I'm going to be running the mix for both the stage as well as the um, you know, uh, you know the PA system as well as the wedges on stage. Uh, just running out of this X32 using uh, the iPad to control it. So pretty simple setup right. as well. So anyway, stay tuned and thanks for watching this channel. Uh, if you guys need any help uh, or any programming or uh, would like to work with me one on one, um, I do one on one consultations. So feel free to get uh, in touch with me and we'll go from there. Thanks. I'm
standing